dreamers dream, your dreams come true. There's no limit to what we can do. Turning no's to yes, leaving doubt behind, releasing the stress. We were born to shine. You're now tuning in to the Sade Champagne Sade Show. Brought to you by Grind Hard Radio. The Sade Champagne Show. Every Wednesday from 6 p.m. to 7.30. We live. Celebrity guest interviews. Segments on health, wellness, fashion, entrepreneurship, spirituality, and more. Good evening, everyone. That was Travis Miller with Sunset. Make sure you check out his brand new EP, The Sunset Collection, on iTunes, Spotify, and Amazon. It's Sade Champagne, and welcome to episode 11 of the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. Can you believe we're already on episode 11? There's only three more episodes until our season one finale. The time has gone by so fast. Every episode is available on iTunes. Search the Sade Champagne Show, and you can download them for free. Also, my Sade Champagne YouTube channel is another place where you can listen to the show afterwards. Thanks to everyone for tuning in from all around the globe. You can listen to us live every Wednesday from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Pacific on your mobile devices at 323 323- 693 or at slash grindhard underscore radio. I've also posted the direct link to this episode on my Twitter and Facebook pages so you can tune in at any time. Thank you to Travis Miller for creating and producing my show's hot theme song and to Scott Swish for mixing it. People have been enjoying it all season long. If this is your first time listening, I'm a professional musical artist performer, inspirational speaker, and entrepreneur. I have created, directed, and executive produced almost 200 charitable and inspirational events, including my popular Power of a Dream Tour. I love mentoring, coaching, bringing out the gold and treasure and other people, performing, speaking, all those amazing things, authentically being myself, and using my platform to encourage, empower, and bring out the gold and treasure that is already in others. Tonight's celebrity guest is my girl, American Curve model and healthy body image activist, Hunter McCready. She is signed to Wilhelmina Models Curve Division Los Angeles and New York and has worked with companies like Nordstrom, Forever 21, Levi's, Lucky Brand Jeans, Burlington Coat Factory, and she can be seen in Melissa McCarthy's new clothing line, 7-7 Campaign. She will be taking a few of your questions live on air after her interview. Also, Tonight, we have brand new segments from my cast. We have a brand new Motivational Moments with Lisa Lewalt segment, What's Going On with Christina Renee segment, featuring special guest, original cast member of Grind Hard Radio, JIT Chronicles, and also Christina Renee segment, as I just mentioned to you guys. And finally, a Tan Candy Style segment and Q&A with Tanya. She might be answering a couple of you guys' questions after her segment, but I wanted to give her extra time tonight so she can catch you guys up if this is your first time tuning into her. Tonight is the final time these ladies will be doing their segment before this season, before our finale. So I'll have an announcement for you guys. You know I love sharing about you know, my favorite people and and friends of mine that are encouraging to me and that are making an impact. So I want to tell you guys about my dear friend, Camille Al-Hassan. She has started her own nonprofit organization titled Black is Breathtaking, or B-I-B. She says, we are specifically catering to the needs and concerns of the black community with our goals being to connect like-minded individuals, empower each other, and build a positive community that discusses uncomfortable topics facing the black woman, black man, and black child from a solution and action-based perspective. Brunch series is 
Sunday, April 17th from 2 to 5 p.m., and it's going to be on mental wellness. And it's going to be at the Arcade Community Center, and the address is 2427 Marconi Avenue in Sacramento, California. So for those of you in Sacramento or anywhere in the Bay Area, I would encourage you to check out her Black is Breathtaking, a.k.a. B.I.B. For more details on her her upcoming brunch series or anything with her nonprofit, I want you guys to check out Black is Breathtaking on Facebook, or you can email her at M-I-L-L-I-E-A-K-A. K-A-A-M-I-L at yahoo.com. I know that was kind of wordy. So just go and follow them as well on Black is Breathtaking on Instagram or, as I mentioned, on Facebook. And you'll have all the details that you need there. All right. I love you, Camille. Thank you for being such an inspiration to me and a great encouragement. All right. My Papa Dream Tour is always booking new shows and performances. This month we will be in Westlake, Ventura, Oxnard, Santa Ana, and Santa Maria. We're actually going to be at Westlake High School this Friday. Shout out to Westlake. Those students are amazing. It's going to be for their kindness week. And so we love traveling. And if you're looking to bring Power of a Dream Tour or any of our award-winning, critically acclaimed artists or speakers to your city or event, please email me at music at gmail.com. Once again, that's Sade Champagne Music at gmail.com for more details. Or you can check out my Facebook page, Sade Champagne, to see our full schedule. Just look under events. Lastly, thank you to everyone who's been watching, sharing, and subscribing all of our new videos. You guys are phenomenal and subscribing to all my new videos. I'm constantly writing new pieces and creating new songs, and I'm going into the studio soon. To find out more about my musical journey and how you can be involved, check out my GoFundMe.com slash Sade Champagne Music. Once again, that's GoFundMe.com slash Sade Champagne Music. We're going to be live tweeting and posting on Facebook all show long, and we want to know your thoughts. Tweet me at S-A-D-E-C-H-A-M-P-A-G-N-E or Facebook me at Sade Champagne or Instagram me at I am Sade Champagne. Hashtag Sade Champagne show or GHR to join in the conversation. Shout out to everyone who's already been tweeting me, Facebooking me, Instagram, YouTube, email. Your guys' support is so encouraging and it thrills me every single week. So we're going to get into our first segment of the night. This is Motivational Moments with Lisa Leewalt. Join award-winning multi-threat performer, entertainer, and motivational speaker Lisa Leewalt as she shares inspirational stories and ideas to help encourage, empower, and activate you and your dreams and aspirations. Be sure to follow her at Lisa Leewalt on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, and hashtag Motivational Moments to join in the conversation. Hey guys, it's Lisa. Welcome to Motivational Moments. So when I first started performing, I actually started out as a street performer. I used to go out to Third Street Promenade and sing and dance on the street for tips. And I remember when I first went out there, I used to always set up next to this group of break dancers. And we had a lot in common. We had a very similar talent level. We had a very similar crowd size. But at the end of the day, those break dancers were walking away with about $300 And I was walking away with about $2. I could not figure out what I was doing wrong. And finally, I got so fed up that I decided to go talk to um, Chris. He was the head break dancer. And I, I asked him, like, Chris, can you help me? I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm not making any money out here. And he said, well, sure, kid. Tell me, what are you doing? Are you asking people for money? And I said, well, of course. I ask them for their spare change or a couple bucks. He said, ha. That's your problem. I said, what, what do you mean? Don't you ask people for money? He said, yeah, I ask them for money, but I don't ask them for their spare change. I ask them for 20 bucks. He said, you're getting crumbs because you're asking for crumbs. You got to start asking for the full cake. So sure enough, uh, the next week I went out, I started asking people for 20 bucks. And within three months, I became the highest paid performer out on the 3rd Street Promenade. Now, a couple months later, I went through something that was really hard in my life. 
I lost somebody who was actually really close to me, and it put me into, like, this depression. And I just didn't want to do anything anymore. It was like I was no longer living for my dreams or doing what I loved. I just was living to survive and finding anything that I could just to numb the pain. And I remember I went out to 3rd Street just to kind of hang out, and I ran into Chris, and he pulled me over, and he said, Hey, Lisa, what? how are you doing? I haven't seen you out here in forever. Are you still performing? And I said, no, I, I don't really do that anymore. He said, what? But you were so talented. I said, I know. I just, I just don't, I don't, I don't feel like it anymore. And he said, Lisa, do you know what I, do you remember what I told you when you first came out here asking how you could make money? I said, of course. You said, stop asking for crumbs and start asking for the full cake. He said, exactly. You're doing in your life right now what you used to do in your career. You can't just live for the crumbs. He said, every person is going to fight battles in their life. And sometimes you're even going to lose those battles. But the important thing is, even if you lose the battle, that in the process you don't lose yourself. You always get back up and try again. You keep fighting. And it was just this powerful moment, and I remember that it stuck with me, and it was kind of the pivotal moment where I decided he was right. You know, you do. You just have to stand up one more time than you fall. And so I I got back up, and I gave things another chance, and I started pursuing my dreams. And you know what? When I started focusing on that vision that I had for my life, I started to get that enthusiasm and that excitement back. And my challenge to you guys today is that No matter how many times you fall, no matter how hard it is, that you never park, that you never just sit there. You just have to get up one more time than you fall. You just have to keep getting back up. Don't let the circumstances of your life determine your outcomes. You determine your life. Don't settle for the crumbs. Never, ever stop going after that vision for your life. Never stop going for the full cake because that's where you're going to find the juice in life. I hope you guys all have an amazing week. All right, everyone. Welcome back to the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. That was Motivational Moments with Lisa Lewalt. As I mentioned, that will be her final time doing the segment for this season before our season one finale. Our next segment of the night is Tan Candy Style with Tanya Chisholm. She is a stylist and vintage clothing curator for the Tan Candy Vintage Boutique, and she will be teaching you how to identify and develop your personal style. Hashtag Tan tan Candy Style to ask her questions and join in the conversation. This is also Tanya's final time during her segment this season, so she's got lots of juicy stuff for you guys, and I extended her segment of five extra minutes for you guys. So go ahead, Tanya. Hey, guys, you may have extended my segment five extra minutes, but these last few steps are pretty quick, so I don't know if I'll use all that time. But um, I am back, and I'm so excited to be here with you sharing the last and final two steps in our kind of eight-step process of how to identify and develop your personal style. Um, And these two steps are kind of my favorite because although the first six steps are absolutely necessary to get to this point, Um, these final two steps I feel like are the most important because they really put the finishing touches on the personal style that you've just developed and and really makes it it yours. So step number seven is find your signature. And your signature is something special that you do with your style that is unique to you. You know, like Audrey Hepburn had her little cropped pants and ballet flats and Jackie O had her oversized sunglasses, you know. With me, I kind of like to mix up my style so much that I don't really wear much of anything religiously. 
So for me, my signature is simply wearing vintage. I wear mostly vintage items with, like, modern touches, and that makes me stand out because nobody else has the pieces that I do. And, you know, that's what I love so much about vintage clothing and kind of why I started a vintage clothing brand is because all the pieces are always one of a kind and special. So that's kind of my signature. And, like, your signature is something that you can play with and develop over time. It's not something that you have to really develop arbitrarily, like, I'm going to just pick this because I'm picking something, you know. Make it be organic and something that really comes out of your own um, personality and style. So, you know, most people don't have a signature. (laughs) You know, you look around and most people don't have a signature thing that they do. But most stylish people do. So adopting, adopting a signature kind of automatically elevates your appearance, making you look much more put together. You know, maybe it's a, a something as simple as you always wear, you know, a bright lip color um, or a bold shaped eyewear, you know, uh, whatever it is. Sorry, my phone is buzzing. I'm like, what is this? Um, whatever it is, um, find it and really rock it. Uh, so that is step seven. Uh, find your signature. And I'd love to hear from you guys, like, what kind of your signature pieces or your signature things that you do. Um, it's always interesting to me to see when people have kind of signatures, like, what is it? Is it like, uh, you know, a certain piece of jewelry or, um, you know, like crazy eye makeup, whatever it is, uh, make it unique to you and really like go for it. Um, And then our final step is step eight. And step eight is always complete your look. So you have now gotten your look down kind of from neck to toe And dressing is really important, but the whole package really includes your hair and your makeup. That's an important part of looking put together. You know, it looks kind of strange if someone's outfit is, like, chic and on point, but, like, their hair is a mess and it kind of looks like they just rolled out of bed. Although, you know, it's kind of a style now. But um, not only that, but you feel more amazing. I mean, just, you know, ask yourself, do you feel better when you go out and you're dressed nicely and your makeup's done and your hair's done? Or do you feel better when you're wearing sweats and your hair's in, like, a messy bun? Like, obviously, you feel better when you're all put together. It's just kind of the effort that that takes that makes it so that we don't do it. Um, And, you know, I don't wear a ton of makeup on the regular, but I do try and make sure that I have, like, just a bit of the basics done. So, for me, something really quick that I do is I kind of mix my foundation and my moisturizer together and then apply it like lotion. That's a really fast way to to get kind of a flawless face. And then I do a little shaping of my brows, add some color to my cheeks, and do a swipe of mascara. And, like, that literally takes under five minutes. And doing that and then doing some, something deliberate with your hair, whether it's sleeking it back into a low bun or doing something. You don't have to curl and do full regalia make, makeup every day. But doing something deliberate, you know, really shows the world that you take yourself seriously and it makes you feel ready and confident to take on your day. So once hair and makeup are kind of taken care of, you only need one more thing, right? And that is a great attitude. So I am really under the impression or the belief that, you know, great style is one. This really means nothing if you have great style and you're an ungracious person, you know. So once you have a polished and distinct look, people can get intimidated by you. I mean, I know I do. Like if I'm in line at Starbucks and there's this girl in front of me and she has like this bad outfit on and she's like super chic – it's kind of intimidating and because that's because when you dress well sometimes it I mean it makes you look powerful it makes you look put together which is kind of what you want but disarm them with a smile and a positive attitude nothing makes you more likable and likable people are usually the people who are most successful because if you're enjoyable to be around people will want to be around you they want to hire you they want to promote you you know you'll kind of be unstoppable so I know we have all been in the experience where you see this, like, girl who's, like, all, like, beautiful, put together, whatever, and, you know, you say hi to her, and she just kind of turns away and doesn't say anything or, like, hi, you know, (laughs) with her sunglasses still on. Like, that sucks. Be the person who's, like, extreme. As I kind of have a rule that, like, the prettier I look, the nicer I have to be. Because it really does, like, it can be intimidating to to other people. And you just, you know, you want to be, whether, no matter what you look like, you want to be as gracious as possible. But to me, that is, like, the really the crowning thing to think about, um, the crowning thing about style. So style has to do with what you put on your body. But style is also so much about how you carry yourself and how you treat other people. And all of the external stuff means nothing if you're going to be a dick, (laughs) you know, so don't be a dick, 
Um, so that is the final step. And I just want to encourage you guys, you know, it takes time to kind of develop your own personal sense of style. So it's not like you're going to go through these eight steps and automatically be a style wizard. But my suggestion to anybody who wants to become more style conscious and fashion conscious is to read magazines. Like I get so many ideas for styling and for pieces that I like or things that would look good on my body from magazines. And it just, the more you see what works, the more it'll be intuitive to you. And you can take that and put your own style on it. So that is it for me, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this segment. Um, All of the information about these segments, if you want to go to my blog and look at it, is um, on tancandy.com under the blog section. And you'll just see all of them at the bottom. It's called Tan Candy Style 101, 102, 103, and 104. Um, Follow me on Instagram at tancandy for updates on what's happening with my shop and for outfit inspiration. I I did a blog post about how to style the slip dress, which is like the sexiest new piece for spring. And it is bomb. So go out and check it out. And yeah, that is it for me. Thank you guys so much for having me. And I will see you when I see you. Grace and style. Are you a fashionista? Do you live for glamour? Are you always posting the chicest OOTDs on Instagram? Then, girl, you have got to check out Tan Candy. Tan Candy is LA's newest, hottest vintage clothing brand, personally curated by stylist and actress Tanya Chisholm. Tan Candy specializes in high end, funky, fun, one of a kind vintage clothing and amazing statement pieces. We also offer personal and editorial styling services. Check us out online at www.tancandy.com or in person every Saturday from noon to 3 p.m. at Made by Jim Bob's Jewelry Shop in North Hollywood. That's 11114 Magnolia Boulevard. Tan Candy, vintage glamour and cool girl style. This is Tanya Chisholm from the Tan Candy Style segment, and you're listening to the Sade Champagne Show on Grindhard Radio. All right, everyone, here is Dirk Bentley with Riser. Keep listening to the Sade Champagne Show on Grindhard Radio. The Living with Fearless Joy segment on the Sade Champagne Radio Show features Rick and Melissa Wood, who run a ministry called Fearless Joy Ministries. Rick and Melissa have a passion to see people free from religion, free from fear, and living lives full of freedom and full of joy. Melissa has authored a book titled Eliminating Fear, How Removing the Fear of God Leads to Removing Fear in Life. If you would like to book Rick and Melissa for any speaking engagements, conferences, or to talk about eliminating fear, you can reach them at the website eliminatingfear.com. Just make sure to go to the Contact Us page where you can get more information and you can communicate with them personally. You can find Melissa at Melissa Joy Wood at Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And you can find Rick at Rick C. Wood at Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And right here on Grind Hard Radio on the Sade Champagne Show. All right, everyone. Welcome back to the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. Our next segment for tonight is What's Going On? This is where my castmates and I discuss hot topics. On the panel tonight, we have, I don't think she's checked into the studio yet. She should be here in a couple minutes, but we do have our special guest. Tonight on the panel, we will have multi-threat artist, host, producer, model, and designer, Christina Renee, who actually leads this segment, and special guest, Jit Chronicles, who is the only original member of the Grind Hard Radio Network. He is in the studio right now, so we want to bring him in. Hi, Jit. How are you doing? How you doing, darling? I'm blessed. Glad to be here once again. Awesome. Fantastic. We're so glad to have you here. Where We we are still waiting for Christina Renee to get into the studio, so I just want to chat with you. And, um, if you'd like to share any updates with our listeners, with Grind Hard Radio, with any of your shows, any of your happenings, your businesses, with your shirts, whatever you'd like to share or promote right now. Well, definitely, Shana, and I definitely appreciate you allowing me to promote on your platform um, tomorrow night at 11 p.m. Grand Hard Radio. Uh, you know, we have very fun shows, but a lot of times we do like to give back to the community. So tomorrow we're doing a special awareness show um, for stroke prevention. 
and I understand that, mm. you know, um, um, May is the month for stroke awareness, but we decided to get, you know, with the program a little bit early. So I encourage everybody uh, to tune in tomorrow night um, at 11 p.m. right here on Ground Hard Radio um, Network mm-hmm. and, and tune in to that special episode. We love to raise awareness within our community, mm-hmm. you know, and that's something that's mm-hmm. very, very serious, you know. So um, mm-hmm. I can't wait to chop it up with my team with that. Definitely. And what else do you have going on that you'd like to share with us? Oh, well, my T-shirt shop, uh, as you mentioned, which you can go to um, DX Customs backslash Jits Closet. Um, everything in my store is under $13.50. And the good thing about it, Shani, wow. all the proceeds go to Habitat. Uh, for humanity, you know, so I would definitely wow. love y'all to go out and get your ground hard radio t-shirts, get your check game t-shirts, your buy hater t-shirts, whatever you want. Just know mm-hmm. that when you order from Jits Closet, uh, it goes mm-hmm. directly uh, to Habitat for Humanity. You know, I love to give back mm-hmm. to that. I, really mm-hmm. I know it's definitely something that's big on your heart. And what made you come up with your clothing line in the first place? You know, well, I wanted to do something that was outside of the box, and I say so many crazy things on the show, so many uh, funny quotes and catchphrases. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just said to myself, I said, you know what, I'm going to put these things on the T-shirt and sell them, you know. So mm-hmm. um, I mm-hmm. have been, you know, uh, an avid giver to Habitat for Humanity for the last five, six years, and it just went hand-in-hand. I donated to them anyway. So I said, you know what, it will be a good idea wow. to tie these shirts and with the charity that I give back to. And that's how that whole mm-hmm. thing came about. And, and Shani, we're doing great. Um, I just moved from um, Spreadshirt to DX Customs, so he's doing all of my graphic designs, and it's a good company. So if you want to mm-hmm. just check him out, you can go to DXCustoms.com. He does graphic designs, shirts, mm-hmm. websites, just about anything that you can um, think of. And we mm-hmm. partnered together, and now my T-shirt shop is under DX Customs, and I couldn't be more happy. Wow. That's so awesome, and it's cool to see how you took, you know, your love of entrepreneurship and business and also combined it with your artistry and creativity and with, you know, being conscious and wanting to, you know, um, be philanthropic as well. So I think that's huge. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Shadi. And the shirts are selling, it's doing well, and I'm having a good time. I love it. That's awesome. Well, we're going to get going into this segment, and Christina Renee can join us when she comes into the studio. And so first off, I'd like to chat with you about um, our presidential election and just how, like, much mudslinging is going on. And, you know, it's crazy because I feel like reality TV and social media has played such a huge part in why you know, um, people are responding the way that they do and why even the presidential election has turned into a joke. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you, you see like people are using memes like nonstop to where, you know, what's happening at the rallies. What, what are some of your thoughts, for example, like what's happening at, um, you know, presidential, you know, candidate or one of the, he's running obviously for presidency, um, Donald Trump. Like, what do you feel? What are your thoughts on his rally and the things that have been taking place? Definitely on the whole Donald Trump thing, and I'm just going to keep it really real. Um, you know, it's like a three-ring circus around here, and it's so funny. Shade, I was mm-hmm. just talking to the mm-hmm. EP yesterday, and I told mm-hmm. him, I said, you know what, because I am going to vote for Hillary Clinton. You know, don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. That's who I'm voting for this year. But, mm-hmm. Shade, I really wasn't fe- feeling the candidates this year. Nobody mm-hmm. really moved me. And yeah. as I sat there and I'm watching, I'm just like, what the heck is going on? You know what I'm saying? It's not. And as mm-hmm. you said, um, Shade, social media has also made it into a circus as well, too. You know, so it's just like mm-hmm. I wasn't even outside of Hillary Clinton. I, I'm not feeling any of the candidates, to be honest. Mm-hmm. It's just not. It hasn't. It, it didn't touch me like other presidential debates. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it seems like it's just been um, so messy to where you're not even really get to know people. There was someone, you know, that I was more interested in because I don't consider myself to be a Democrat or Republican. I'm for mm-hmm. whatever is right and that's going to benefit majority of the people, you know. But um, with Senator Rand Paul, Dr. Rand Paul, he was someone I was actually, you know, um, interested in his policies because he actually talked about things, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. he talked about the fact that you know, our education in America is like one of the lowest, you know, um, in the world. And he was, you know, one of his policies and his ideas he had is he wanted to, the same way we pay, you know, like entertainers and athletes so much money, 
you know, in order, mm-hmm. to, you know, for their career, that why aren't we able to pay a lot of money to, like, you know, highly accredited educators and ones that have, like, you know, that basically they have a success rate that's super high. Why, why aren't we paying them more money so that way we can, you know, even do, like, web streams, either, you know, do mm-hmm. like FaceTime, whatever is necessary, Skype, in order to have the best educators in the world teaching mm-hmm. our children, you know? Teachers because are very low paid. Like, I was talking about that too, Shade. That's, 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 that's the sad. Mm-hmm. It's sad mm-hmm. when the teachers are the one that the reason that we have these incredible athletes and and mm-hmm. and, and, and mm-hmm. good people that's in their great fields, you know. So teachers are definitely mm-hmm. underpaid, and I've been saying that for yeah. the last ten, fifteen years. Right, I agree, and then I feel like the ones, you know, like you think of people like Dr. Steve Perry and other educators, you know, who are doing so much to help children and help kids and really helping them to mm-hmm. excel at a high, high rate. I feel like they need to be taken everywhere in America. Like all kids should be able to have access to them, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, so it's like you don't get to really hear right now in the presidential, ele- you know, election, you know, or as they're going through this, you don't get to actually hear what people are thinking about because everything is so based on like mud slinging and fighting mm-hmm. and on all this stuff. And it's like I don't understand like how people can be having such harsh thoughts and such bigoted and discriminate, you know, discriminatory. I don't know if that's the word, but discriminating thoughts. And mm-hmm. we are now like the most multicultural we are in our country, you know. Absolutely. Like you think people would be more open. You're right, and like I said, Shada, it's just like I, I don't even. Nobody's really moving me like I thought they were. Or even mm-hmm. when Obama was first running, you know, I was right. interested. You know, I was invested. Right. But this time, you know, um, it's it's sad. That's all I can say. It's very sad, yeah. you know. And then they're turning it into a three ring circus. Yeah, definitely. And so I'm just hoping they can get it together because people are definitely laughing at us all mm-hmm. around the world. Like, look at us like we are foolish. So definitely looking for something, you know, for a change and those things. So I want to talk about, you know, the musical artist Kaylani. Is that how you pronounce her name, right? Kaylani? Yes. Yes. Yes, so I would like to discuss her because if you guys had heard the story recently, you know, um, there was pictures posted, I guess, of her with an ex where he had posted the pictures, and I guess it caused an uproar because she's in a relationship with a famous athlete, I believe, Kylie Irving or Irving, Irving, I Mm -hmm. I believe is his name. And so um, then it caused, like, such a stir. She deleted, like, all of her social media, and then there were reports that she had tried to commit suicide and it was just like, man, it's crazy. And that's why I know that our world is being run by social media because it went mm-hmm. from being, you know, um, it went from being everyone was like, oh, my gosh, she's such a hoe. She, she's such mm-hmm. a this. She's such a that. To where all of a sudden people are like, get well soon, get better, girl. And it's like, well, where were your, where were your encouraging thoughts for her or keeping your mouth shut, you know, when they were going through this public spectacle? You know, mm-hmm. it's like where everyone's life, be, her whole life became everyone's business. And even they had celebrities like Chris Brown, whom I adore Chris Brown so much, but I know that he definitely needs some help too. But, it, excuse me, it's like, every you know, he's even given his thoughts and saying negative things about her. And so it's just, you know, um, it's like suicide is nothing to mess around with. It's nothing it, to joke it, about. It's not. It's not. You know, sad. And so, you know, what are some of your thoughts on that story? Like, do you feel because women get such a worse rep for like cheating, even allegedly cheating, than guys do? Like, guys are known like, oh, this is the thing that guys do. This is how we handle things. But for women, it's mm-hmm. like being a player. It's a rap. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Um, well, I would say tell you this, Shadé. You know, it's definitely an unfortunate situation, and like you said, suicide is nothing to play with. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it goes back. And I hate to keep blaming social media for everything, but I always yeah. tell folks, social media can sometimes be a blessing, and sometimes it can be a curse. You know, so you have to kind mm-hmm. of just watch and monitor what you put out there. You know, to the mm-hmm. masses, because just the littlest thing, Shadé. Folks will take mm-hmm. it, turn it into something else, take it and run with it, and then it becomes something bigger than it needs to be, you know. So for her to be, whether she contemplated suicide or tried to, you know, um, commit suicide, whatever the case may be, it should have never gone that far, you know. So I would definitely mm-hmm. say, you know, you have to monitor and, and, and watch what you put out there on social media. You mm-hmm. know, because there's people that – bloggers, they do this for a living, and they're just looking for mm-hmm. a story. You understand what I'm saying? So you have to be careful mm-hmm. what you put out there. 
And I'm I'm so mm-hmm. sad that she got that bad rap because she doesn't deserve mm-hmm. it. Yeah, I agree. And She's it's nice like young lady. we. Yeah, and it's like we ha- – she's so young, you know what I mean? It's like 20 mm-hmm. and already starting to gain that success in the industry is very young. A lot of people are not mentally, emotionally, and spiritually developed enough yet for when even that success comes and when that notoriety comes, you know? Because it's a life changer as well as a game mm-hmm. changer, you know, so you definitely have to be prepared. You're absolutely right, Shade. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we as a society need to be more responsible. Like, I, you know, I don't – I refuse to post, you know, hurtful comments and, you know, um, and to talk trash about people on social media. I won't do it. Even if I'm not in favor of someone like, you know, Donald Trump, I'm not going to talk trash about him, you know, and I'm not going to post things on there because he's still a a human being at the end of the day. And I'm also, you know, like with her story, Kalani, Kalani, I'm not in her life, you know what I mean? And it's like, so I try to see things from both perspectives, like from a, a viewer or a fan and then seeing it as someone in the public eye. And even mm-hmm. I've had, you know, I've had days where people would post so many negative things or I, like, had to block multiple people because I'm just not going to get in an argument with them and I'm only going to allow positivity to be around me. And even if I start noticing people that I'm close to, never any of my closer or best friends, let's say someone that I'm following and they're posting negative and hurtful things, and if I'm not able to encourage them to be considerate of what they post, I will unfollow them, you know, because right. I just don't want to be in that environment. Mm-hmm. And you always get some type of neg- negativity from social media. It's it's crazy, you know. So. Mhm. Mhm. Definitely. And so I would um like to ask you a couple questions while we're doing what's going on because I as we're talking about I love what's going on with you since I have you on the show Absolutely. all to myself. How did you first get? How did you first start Grind Hard Radio or get you know connected? with the other EP and, you know, EPs and everyone on the show to get this network started? Well, originally, Shadé, and I don't think a lot of people know this, I was doing radio before Grand Hard Radio. Um, I was actually on a show called Live with Jit and Junebugger. Uh, this was 2010. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did the show okay. for about six months. Um, we ended up having um, difference of, you know, well, creative differences, I would say. Mhm. I think Cody has dropped in the studio, so we're going to make sure we get him back in right now. He's going to call back in. So Cody, I think, uh, or Cody, a.k.a. JIT Chronicles, and Christina Renee is not here in the studio yet. I want to know if we have any callers on the line or if anyone who's listening and posting on social media. We'd love to know your thoughts on these things. I'm going to look through some of your comments right now. Okay, he's back in the studio. Let's bring him back in. Yes, All you right, know, Jay, we got you back me. in. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> it's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> but what, yeah, but what I was saying, Shadé, was that I was on the show prior to Ground Hard Radio, and once we had those creative differences, I decided that I wanted to do a show um, for myself, and at the time, I hooked up with a good friend, a great um, hip hop artist down here in Jacksonville, Florida, Duval County, by the name of Trigger, and I teamed up with Dangerous Tactics from Virginia, and we mm-hmm. created Ground Hard Radio together. And we started mm-hmm. Ground Hard Radio in 2011, um, March 8, mm-hmm. 2011. And here we are, April mm-hmm. 2016, and we are still growing. We still going, wow. we're still stronger, you know, and um I'm mm-hmm. the only original cast member, you know, that's been there every episode all five years, you know. So um Wow I just love I, I love artists, Shade. I come from the world of artists, you know. I know mm-hmm. artists, I network with artists and I was like, you know what, why not create a platform, you know, for this genre, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that's what we did. Mm-hmm. You know, we definitely mm-hmm. created that plat that platform for underground music artists. Mhm, And I feel like that's something that's really cool about you is that one of the many things that is really cool about you is you're very consistent, you know, and so you stuck with it over the years, and it's reached out to hundreds and thousands of people all over the world, and it's continuing to grow. And I'm so thankful to be a part of Grind Hard Radio Network and to be able to have the opportunity to have my dream come true of having my own radio show, you know, and it's like mm-hmm. – I feel it's such an honor, you know, to be able to call ourselves radio personalities. And and I especially love the fact that with how our network is and the way that you guys have created it, you know, I can talk about what I want to talk about. We get to control Mm -hmm. and determine what 
type of content is going to be shared, what the views are that are going to be shared. And I think, you know, a lot of artists or people in the entertainment industry, they don't understand how powerful that is, you know, because so many people from even the start of their careers are willing to give up, you know, um, what, you know, give up their choice to be able to determine what type of content are you going to show, what type of artist do you mm-hmm. want to be, how do you want things to go, because they just want to be famous so bad and they want to be, quote, unquote, successful so bad. But I think that's one of the cool things about what we do is being able to share and show what we want, you know, and what mm-hmm. we think is going to be beneficial to our listeners. And staying true to yourself too, Shardy, I will say this, out of the mm-hmm. five years that I've been on the show, I've had that same thorough line from beginning to the end, staying true to myself, mm-hmm. Knowing who mm-hmm. I am and being comfortable enough to share that with everybody, you understand. So mm-hmm. I'm very secure mm-hmm. in with who I am. So um, that I think that's something that really got me going through all these five years. Cause they're like, Jed, how how do you be on every episode? You've been on all four hundred and twenty-five mm-hmm. episodes, and it's all about staying true to yeah. yourself and loving what you do. I love to yeah. host Ground Hard Radio every Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah. And especially with everything that you do, you have other things full-time in your life going on, and you still are able to be there every Tuesday and Thursday. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's that's why we call ourselves Reality Radio, because it's the reality that we live in. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so for people that are listening that have a dream, you know, they want to start a radio show or radio network, you know, anything, anyone who has a dream, you know, and they feel like, you know, they don't have the resources, they feel like they don't have the money, they don't have the connections, you know, all the excuses we go through in our head. What would you share with them? What are some words of wisdom and encouragement that you would share with them to move, and out in order to be able to move forward in their dream? Um, well, I would say keep dreaming. Never give up on your dream. Um, mm. You know, set your goal and try to achieve it. You understand? Because like mm-hmm. you said, Shadi, a lot of times we don't have it in our budget we don't have it this, we don't have that, but it's ways that you can network and you can communicate with other people to get your things going. And I always mm-hmm. tell folks, you know, don't never let nobody tell you what you cannot do. You know, you just got to mm-hmm. go out there and you got to take, you, you got to take the bull by the horn, Sade, you know, and that's basically mm-hmm. what I did because mm-hmm. when I started up this network, I didn't have that much money, but I had mm-hmm. my faith to know that, mm-hmm. okay, if I can get my foot in the door a little bit, I got the rest mm-hmm. of it, you know, so, um, mm-hmm. I would definitely mm-hmm. say keep pushing, keep dreaming, mm-hmm. and keep going. Something mm-hmm. if, if you follow those tools, something's gonna happen for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, that's so just good. what it is you know at the mean? end of the day. Yeah, that's so good. Like you're spending so much wisdom. I'm like quoting you. You <laughs> know, I'm going to be able. I'm going to post it as well that. because. It's true because, like you said, even though you didn't have a lot of money when you started, you had your faith, and that's all that we need. You know, a dream is all that you need. I'm, I'm a firm believer of where there's a dream, there's a way. You know, and it's been and dream something big. That, yeah, to dream big, and dreams have been so monumental and huge in my life. You know that I don't know, like I don't know what. I would do or be without dreams because I feel like everything we see, everywhere we go, everything was a dream in someone's heart from the from the laptop that I'm on right now to the headphones mm-hmm. that we have to the microphone to your cell phone to carpet, you know, to the ceiling, to everything. Absolutely. You see everything around you. It was all a dream that was in someone's heart, and look what has happened. Absolutely. That's why I tell awesome. them, trying to keep dreaming and dream big. Mhm, And uh, I think that's incredible, you know, because you just never know where things are going to take you. So our last you topic I want to discuss is with um, Jay-Z and Kanye West. You know, there's been rumors that they have um, are having a disagreement, which is funny because I look at them as like brothers, where even though mm-hmm. you know, they may have disagreements or things happen, they're always going to stick together and they're always going to work it out. But supposedly – you know, Kanye West had said his newest album was only going to come out on title, you know, and it, and he wasn't going to do it through anyone else, you know, like all his new music. And so supposedly he broke that agreement and there's like, you know, um, like some uneasiness with him and Jay-Z. Mm-hmm. And so what do you feel like with the team, you know, with you having a team and having worked with teams before, do you feel like loyalty is something that's huge? Do you feel like what Kanye allegedly did is worth, you know, splitting a partnership. I would like to know your thoughts on that. Well, you know, loyalty is is, is very key when it comes to a team because, you know, everybody got to be on the same page now. Um, mm-hmm. But 
I will say this, however, because when I look at Jay Z and I look at Kanye West, those are two titans, you know. Mm-hmm. So you know, you know, they might bump heads. Now, whether can can I say whether he's wrong or right? No, mm-hmm. you know, but it got to be some type of communication at the end of the day, you know. But as far as mm-hmm. team, yeah, loyalty does play a very big, you know, because mm-hmm. everybody has to be on the same level at the end of the day, you know. But I look at, mm-hmm. look at them as two titans, um, Sade, and that's kind of like a hard question to answer because this is my first time actually hearing this story, you know, so mm-hmm. I'm surprised by that, you know. But then mm-hmm. again, I'm not surprised by Kanye West's actions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Definitely. You know, it's because he's always because, you know, into some mess. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say, you know, but I feel like they're going to work through it. You know what I mean? They always do. They have the kind of friendship because there's just some friendships like that in your life, and we can all name a few people like that where mm-hmm. you're just like, you know what? We may have gone through some challenging times, but we know that our friendship, our relationship is God-ordained. So whatever it is, we're going to work through it. <laughs> you know, yeah, we're going to work, work through it. it. Out. Yes, because you realize it's more beneficial to have that person in your life than to not have them there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Exactly. So we're going to be wrapping up what's going on. Guys, Christina Renee wasn't able to make it tonight, and this is our final time doing this segment um, before our season one finale. But the great news is that you got to hear more from Jit Chronicles, and I really enjoyed being able to give him a mini interview. And so please, as we're wrapping up your segment, Jit, please share with everyone um, how they can, what your your awareness show that's coming up next and how they can tune in. Yes, please tune in to Ground Hard Radio tomorrow night at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on the Ground Hard Radio Network. We are raising awareness for stroke prevention. Uh, we have four episodes left of Season 23, so make sure y'all tune in to that. And if you want to know everything, that's all Ground Hard Radio, including the Sade Champagne Show, Radio Divas, and Grown Folks Business. You can check out the official website, and that's groundhardradio.com. We are Reality Radio. Awesome. Well, thank you so much to JIT Chronicles for being here tonight. This was What's Going On. We want to hear your opinions on these topics. Tweet, Facebook, or Instagram any of the castmates using hashtag Sade Champagne Show or GHR or What's Going On. We are live posting and tweeting with you all show long. All right. So next up, we have Michelle Williams featuring Beyonce and Kelly Rowland with Say Yes. Keep listening to the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio because right after this, I have my interview with my girl, Hunter McCready. Are you looking for a dynamic musical artist, performer, host, or inspirational speaker for your next event? What about a mentor, vocal instructor, or workshop leader for your school, company, or seminar? Contact Sade Champagne for countless professional services that are sure to fit your particular need. She is an in-demand, award-winning, and critically acclaimed musical artist, performer, inspirational speaker, and entrepreneur who is invited all around the world. She is known for having a powerful voice, turning ideas into action, creating, directing, and executive producing popular, charitable, and inspirational events, and bringing out the gold in others. Her services are for all ages, backgrounds, and environments. Contact Sade Champagne at Sade Champagne Music at gmail.com. That's spelled S A D E C H A M P A G N E M U S I C at gmail.com. Sade Champagne Music at gmail.com to book her for your next event or project. Hi, this is Melissa Joy Wood with the Living with Fearless Joy segment on the Sade Champagne Show, and you're listening on Grind Hard Radio. Welcome back to the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio, everyone. We are on episode 11. We only have three more episodes until our, se- until our season one finale, including tonight's show. Right now, we have our celebrity guest interview with my girl, Hunter McCready. Hunter Sienna McGrady is an American Curve model. She is signed to Wilhelmina Models Curve Division, Los Angeles, and New York. She has been a spokeswoman for body positivity and uses her social media platforms to spread awareness for a healthy body image. She has worked with companies such as Nordstrom, Forever 21, Levi's, Lucky Brand Jeans, 
Torrid, Burlington Coat Factory, Dillard's, just to name a few. And she can be seen in Melissa McCarthy's new clothing line, 7-7 Campaigns. She is also an activist for the One Heart, One Mission Foundation, which works with Orphanage in Haiti and organizes missions trips and feeding programs to help support children in need. Hunter will be answering a few of your questions during her interview. Call 323 323- 693-3043 and press 1 to chat with Hunter and me. And once again, if you're already listening in, just press 1 so I can bring you into the studio and you can ask her a question. We'll also be answering your questions from Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Hashtag Sade Champagne Show to ask us a question via social media. Hunter, how are you doing? Hi, babe. I'm doing good. How are you? Fantastic. I want to thank you so much for being a celebrity guest on the Sade Champagne Show tonight for Episode 11. Of course. I am honored. Thank you for having me on. You are such an inspiration. I want to tell our listeners before we get going in with your interview, as somehow Hunter and I became friends on Facebook a while back, and I've been following her journey, you know, and, um, and I, just did a Facebook, I just did a photo shoot, as you guys know, recently back in December, and so I reached out to Hunter on Instagram, and she has so many followers, and I know she's a busy girl. She travels all the time, and so I wasn't <laughs> sure if she was going to reach out, to, if she was going to answer back, but I was like, let me just try anyways, because I'd already reached out on Facebook, and I know she gets tons of comments, and so she just messaged me back, and she was so encouraging, and she just, you know, told me to be myself and that God was with me, and she gave me some amazing tips. And then I showed her my pictures afterwards, and I just felt so comfortable, and she really encouraged me, and, um, and she does that with everyone. And so I'm really honored to have you on the show tonight. Oh, you're so sweet, and those pictures were beautiful. Oh, my gosh. They were to Thank die you. for. I'm so Thank excited you. for you, and your show is amazing. I love, love, love listening in. Um, Thank I'm you so, so much. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. So- So when were you first interested in modeling, and how did you get into it? You know what? I started when I was 16 years old. Um, Mm -hmm. I first got into it because my mom was actually a model. She was signed with Wilhelmina as well. Um, Wilhelmina Cooper, um, who was an Mm -hmm. actual model, who was a person, was her agent. So um, yeah, at the age of 16, I, I just remember looking at my mom and being like enamored with her and I wanted to be my mom and I still do. Um, Mm -hmm. And I told her I wanted to model. So I started at 16 and I started out straight size, which means, um, you know, a size zero to four. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, that wasn't really cutting it for me. I couldn't keep up with that body type because my Mm -hmm. structure doesn't host that kind of body. Um, Mm -hmm. So the past three years, I kind of learned about plus size the past three years and Mm -hmm. um, switched over. And it's been um, incredible since. I mean, I haven't, uh, I kind of haven't stopped, (laughs) which is amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. I feel so, so blessed. Mm-hmm. And so when, were your family and friends supportive of your decision to be a model? Absolutely. I mean, I have the most incredibly supportive family. Um, mm-hmm. My dad's an actor. My mom was a model, and they're in the business, and so they get it. Um, it mm-hmm. is, it's a form of art, you know. You kind of get to express mm-hmm. yourself um, in a different way. So they were, they're very supportive. I could have said anything I wanted to be, and, and they would have been on board. Um, as well as my friends. I mean, I have, you know, my very tight-knit friends who were very supportive. Um, of course, mm-hmm. there was a lot of people who said there's no way it's going to happen um Mm -hmm. you know there's always those people Mm -hmm. who are going to say it's not you know naysayers Mm -hmm. but you know you also have to use that to fuel um that fire you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. definitely and so is modeling your dream career or do you desire to use it as a platform for other ventures or both you know what i I used to think that modeling solely was my dream career, and I realized mm-hmm. quickly that I want to do bigger. <laughs> um, I want to do, not that modeling isn't big in itself, but I want to utilize uh, this platform um, to have a voice to talk to women about, um, you know, body image and um, mm-hmm. just b- bigger things beyond the way we look. Um, and I would mm-hmm. love to down the line possibly have a clothing line, um, mm-hmm. which I may be working on right now. Yay. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, it, it, I think modeling is my dream career, but it ties into, um, 
uh, moving forward, it ties into a lot of bigger, um, you know, aspects. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that makes And so I would like to know what are some of the challenges you have faced in your career and how do you overcome or face them? And before you answer, I want to say one of the things I enjoy most about you, there's tons of things I enjoy about you, but one of the things I enjoy most about you is that you have allowed people in your journey, you know, from when you were young and started modeling until now, you know, because a lot of people, they – they would, would say if they get a particular body shape or a particular hairstyle or whatever that they want, a skin color, a feature, whatever it is, they will completely get rid of all pictures on the, online of them before of how they looked or anything right. and just, you know, like they just came out of the woodwork looking this way. And I think one of the right. coolest things I've been able to see about you is you have showed people your entire journey and you're so proud of you of who you are, even if it may not have been, you know, you may not have been the healthiest, but who you were on the yeah. inside. Because, you know, um, and I'll let you talk more about it, but I just feel like you've been able to show people that you can love yourself in all seasons and re- and you show people yeah. the process, you know, and so um, I just wanted right. to share that with you. Oh, thank you so much. I mean, that means the world to me, really. And it, it, it honestly, like, that that all boils down to my relationship with God. You know, I know that mm-hmm. during any of this, I needed – Um, an anchor and he was my Mm -hmm. anchor and he really uh, instilled in me that through everything I was going to make an impact. Um, Mm -hmm. We all have times in our lives where, you know, for me, I fluctuate a lot in weight. I can Mm -hmm. gain it really Mm -hmm. fast. I can lose it really fast. I've always Mm -hmm. been that way. Um, Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things, um, you know, that's been kind of challenging for me, especially in um, the modeling industry, because, Mm -hmm. you know, it's all about the way you look, Um, even when it comes to stretch marks and cellulite and things like that. I mean, that was one of my biggest, um, I think that's like one of my most liked posts is when I showed a photo of me on Photoshop and the same photo that was Photoshopped and showing Mm -hmm. like the, the difference and letting people know that um, a lot of it is smoke and mirrors and it, but it is amazing. And like, I, I, you know, I love being in the industry, but to not forget Mm -hmm. that there's an entire team that goes into it. Um, Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's hard, the challenge, you know, it's hard to um, get that across to people um, because everyone is kind of, they're kind of molded to believe that people look a, a certain way. And that's the biggest challenge is to show them like, no, this isn't even how the models look. One of my favorite <laughs> quotes is the models in the magazine don't even look like the models in the magazine. You know, mm-hmm. like we show up, we show up on set and I mean, I show up, you know, right now I'm in um, Ohio working for Lane Bryant for the week. Um, and wow. I show up on set with, you know, sweatpants and my hair up and, no makeup mm-hmm. and glasses, and thank God for, mm-hmm. uh, you know, makeup and hair to, <laughs> to make me look all kind of glamorous. And you know, I today mm-hmm. I did a swim, sh- I did some swim stuff with them, and I got, you know, oil on my body and all this stuff to mm-hmm. make me look like I'm dewy. And I'm like, you know, uh, that's that's a big part of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, and so you feel like, and so you feel like, how you've been able to overcome or face this challenge is just by being real. Being, you know what, that's all it's about. That is all it's about. You have to be real because if you're not, how are you going to make an impact? How are people going to trust you? I, that's what I love about social media is that you have a, a platform where you can um, con- you can connect with people on a personal level. I want them to feel like whenever someone says I'm a fan of yours, I'm like, no, no, you're my friend. Like I mm-hmm. want to be, I want to connect with you on that level. I don't have you know, fans, I have friends. Um, you mm-hmm. know, I, 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 um, I think that's what's so great is coming across and saying, I'm just like you, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, there's nothing anymore to me that is, you know, spectacular. Like I wake up and I have bad days too. I'm, mm-hmm. you know, I have roles mm-hmm. too. I have issues too. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it really is all about being real um, and knowing mm-hmm. where you stand Mm, that's good. Who and yeah. what inspires you? Um, oh man, what inspires me is art and music. Mm-hmm. Um, I, 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 I love. My dad is an artist. My sister's an artist. 
Um, I've been around it my whole life. Um, and uh, my family inspires me. We're, we're a very close, tight-knit family. We're very, you know, we're Christians. We, mm-hmm. um, we fellowship together. And it's just mm-hmm. nothing brings a rush in me to want to do better and bigger and, and, and go out there and grab the bull by the horns than that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, every time, I mean, even like, you know, we're very close to the fact where sometimes I'll call my dad or my mom or my sister up and let them know mm-hmm. like, Hey, listen, I'm having a rough day. Can we pray that I get inspired today? Cause I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to need it. You know, I'm going to mm-hmm. need it today. Mm-hmm. I, I need God in this moment. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, I'm so grateful that I have that, um, backbone, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. To all of our listeners out there, we are going to be taking your questions for Hunter in just a few minutes, so hang tight and keep listening in. I want to get all this juicy and inspirational info for you guys, so keep tuning in, and we are going to answer a few of your questions in a minute or in a little while. All right, so you're very vocal about your love of God. Have you always been a woman of faith and grace? Always. Um, I, I, I always have, I, I grew up in a Christian household. Um, I really found, I think that there's, um, having Christianity in your life and then there's having a personal relationship with God. And when I was Mm -hmm. about 18 years old is when I really found, um, my personal relationship with him. Um, and Mm -hmm. that to me was a turning point in my life because I kind of, Mm -hmm. um, leading up to that point, I was a little bit lost. I went through depression, um, anxiety, mm-hmm. all these things. And when I had that, when I had that moment of clarity, um, my life turned around. Um, mm. And it actually, it happened after a really tragic, crazy breakup. Um, mm-hmm. And I just kind of felt like I got stripped of everything. And I mm. felt like I had nothing left because I mm-hmm. had given so much away of myself. And mm-hmm. at those times is when God is so prominent and is there to mm-hmm. hold you and hug you and you feel it, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think the most even, you know, when you're stripped mm-hmm. of everything and he's mm-hmm. it, you know. Mm-hmm. And so for um, for women and girls that are listening, and I guess this would apply to guys too, you know, because yeah, we see it often in our society and especially not even just for young people, but all ages of people, they do get into relationships. And it's like that person yeah. becomes their entire world. And like you said, if yeah. anything is unshaky in that or anything happens, they feel like their whole world is, like, gone. And so what yeah. would be, with, especially if you having gone through something like that, you know, what would be some words of encouragement or wisdom that you would share with our listeners, you know, um, in order to be able to guard their hearts? And not guarding, obviously, is not letting anyone in, but being aware of the fact that no one yeah. can fill us. You know, that's the thing. You just said it right there is that no one person can ever fill a God-shaped hole. Um, Mm. You know, I think that um, a lot of times we put a lot of um, pressure on ourselves to fulfill certain people, and we work so hard, and we give our hearts too much and too fast. Um, Mm. And that's what I did, you know, and um, I realized quickly that – I began living for a person instead of a purpose. So, Mm. you know, that's very um, eye opening. You know, I think that it's just about first thing, especially younger girls, take it slow, Mm -hmm. take it so slow because you have so much going on in your life. You have so much ahead of you. Relationships come and go. Um, Mm -hmm. Take it slow, have fun. Don't put too much pressure on it. And don't Mm -hmm. forget um, where you stand because everyone has a purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, You Mm -hmm. may not know it yet. You may be finding Mm -hmm. it. You may be on that path, but you Mm -hmm. have a purpose. I can guarantee every single one of you um, and Mm -hmm. to not lose sight of that um, because Mm -hmm. it's easy to, especially in today's society and, um, you know, anyone, a lot of people would love to take your heart and take your soul and run with it, you know, but just stay grounded um, in that. Mm, that is so good. Girl, you are, you're giving me so many quotes 
moment, like quote worthy oh. moments. I am writing them down and I'm going to oh, quote you on Twitter <laughs> and Facebook. <laughs> so, really good stuff that I think that oh, people can, you. you know, really marinate in and that would really greatly encourage them, you know. Right. So, thank you so much. You're sweet. So, how do you stay confident while working in industries that have been known to tear people down? Um, that is a great question. Um, and I have a lot of girls who ask me that and mm-hmm. I'm going to be completely honest. There's days where I, mm-hmm. I don't feel like I'm my best, but you have to mm-hmm. push through and you have to see picture. And that's when I get reminded what I do, um, why I do what I do. Um, honestly, it took me a long time to realize that I was not my outer appearance. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's funny mm-hmm. because this may be going off track a little bit, but one of my favorite, you know, compliments I can get now is you're so mm-hmm. funny or you're so smart, not you're so beautiful. Like to me, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I Because it, mm-hmm. to me, it, it was something that was becoming like, okay, well, my goodness, I hope I'm something more than that. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. this, you know, that, that, goes to you know and um we are so much more than the way we look um and I have to Mm. remember that I bring so much more to the table than that um Mm. and then I'm beautiful you know what I mean like I what Mm -hmm. I what is so amazing about my job is that I get to interact with different size girls different races different Mm -hmm. uh, you know everything and Mm. I they all bring something to the table and I have Mm -hmm. to remember I bring something to the table of course as well um Mm -hmm. and I'm beautiful the way I am the thing is is the moment we say something is wrong with us we're doubting the way our creator made us and Mm. that is my God doesn't he does no wrong. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I realize, God, every time I sit, you know, I sit in the mirror and I'm, you know, looking at my stomach or my rolls or this or that. Yeah, I mm-hmm. can be healthier. Yeah, I can. But if I'm tearing myself down, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm saying, God, you know, the way you made me isn't perfect in your eyes. And I want to mm-hmm. live for his purpose and for him, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And just being reminded that um, he makes no mistakes. And um, Mm -hmm. we're perfect the way we are. You know, everybody, Mm -hmm. everybody, zero, Mm -hmm. size zero, double zero, and all the way up, you know, every race, every human in the world, Mm -hmm. even the, you know, people that we wouldn't think were um, the Mm -hmm. most amazing people, you know, God loves them as well, too, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would like for you um, to share with our listeners about your post you know, that I love so much. And one of the things that drew me to you when you had a picture of yourself when you were younger and when you were thinner and you, and you talked about how, how unhealthy you were and you were trying to fit a certain mm-hmm. image to the body, you know, that you have yeah. now and how you've been learning to love who you are. Cause I feel like there's so many girls and women who can relate to that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I, when I first started out, I'm almost six feet tall. I'm five eleven and a half, but I say I'm six feet. Um, and I was a hundred and a tall drink of water. Too. I was six. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I was, you know, I was super thin and I was like, I had, what I was looking up to was this perfect 1% of the world, Victoria's Secret, you know, yada, 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 what I thought was perfect. Um, Mm -hmm. And I was trying to fit into that um, category. So I would, you know, work out for like three hours. I wouldn't eat. I would, um, you know, count my calories. And still, um, I was telling one of the girls that another model who I'm staying with out here, um, Mm -hmm. you know, I I showed up to a job. Um, when I was 16 years old with my mom and we walked in and we said, Hey guys, we're going to run to the bathroom and then we'll come back and shoot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, they, one of the creative directors came in the bathroom and said, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like, unfortunately we think that you're too big. We don't know if you're going to, we don't think you're going to fit in the top. So we're going to have to send you home. They didn't even give me a chance oh to try on a top. They just mm-hmm. based it off of me walking in. I was a size like, Oh my gosh, maybe if I, 
sneezed. I was a size four, um, mm-hmm. you know, and they sent me home. And so I was too mm-hmm. big. They didn't even give me a shot. Um, mm-hmm. And that moment for me at that time um, was devastating because I mm-hmm. thought my dreams, I mean, people keep telling me I need to lose weight. My dreams kind of collapsed in that moment. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. And I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed. I was mortified. Um, mm-hmm. Now, if that happened, <laughs> I'd be like, mm-hmm. "Oh, excuse me, <laughs> no, thank you." Mm-hmm. Like, I, you know, like I, 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 I just, I built. I. It took a long, long time, and thank God for the um, for the leaders like the Ashley Grams and the Tara Lynns and the Candace mm-hmm. Topines who have kind of paved the way, and they've. Um, They've really, really, really been monumental in um, just bringing diversity into the, the, mm-hmm. in the industry, you know, and saying, mm-hmm. hey, look, look at us. We're a size 14, 16, 18, um, and even Tess Holiday, who is, you know, a size 22, they're saying we're beautiful women too. Look at us. We can wear clothes too. And I remember looking at that and saying, wow, I'm really intrigued. Like this is. They're so beautiful. Um, there was one cover that Tara Lynn, Candace Southine, and um, mm-hmm. Ashley Graham did it for Vogue Italia, and it was the cover. Mm-hmm. And I remember looking at that mm-hmm. cover um, like four years ago and thinking, mm-hmm. oh, my gosh, these girls are stunning. I have that body. Mm-hmm. That's me. Mm-hmm. I took some time off, mm-hmm. and I got a boyfriend, finished school, you know. But then when I got back into it, I looked at that, and I was like, that's that's what I want to be like. Mm-hmm. So that that mm-hmm. that inspired me to say I want girls to look at me and say, okay, this girl can be confident. I she has a curvy body, she has cellulite, she has uh, stretch marks, she has you know whatever all that, and I do too, and I can be like that. Mm-hmm. I want to be like that. Um, mm-hmm. So you know it it develops um, because my the way I thought because what I was seeing changed. I always tell people mm-hmm. if, if everyone wore, you know, green shirts and blue hair and that was what was popular, you'd look around and everyone mm-hmm. would be wearing green shirts and blue hair. But you mm-hmm. know what I mean? that's why the whole plus movement is on the rise, the whole um women empowerment. I mean, mm-hmm. one of the worst one of the worst things I can ever hear is when someone says real women have curves. I think it is the mm-hmm. worst statement I've ever heard in my life. I'm saying Mm-hmm. That I I it makes me cringe because I say no a real woman is a real woman whether you're a size zero plus mm-hmm. you're a woman you mm-hmm. know it's just mm-hmm. so contradictory of this positive movement I mean we need to band together yeah. and lift each other up it's time it's time mm-hmm. yep and that's you one know. of the things I appreciate so much about you is just because you are curvier you know, a more voluptuous model, you do not center women. And I think it, and it no. could be because of the fact that you understand their story and you I've been have there. also been really thin, so you understand. But I feel like that's one of the things, you know, another thing that I adore about you so much is you do not shame yeah. women who look different no. than you. And that speaks no. volumes about your character and who you are. And so I'm going to, um, I have a caller on the line, and this is actually one of my students, because, you know, I mentor young girls and women, and I told her that oh. you were going to be on my show, and she saw the pictures of you. She's like, oh, my gosh, she's so beautiful, and, and I can oh. be, and she, she felt so confident, because she was like, if you can be confident in who you are, then she can feel confident in who she is, and so I right. want to see if she has a question for you, and I want to have you, um, you know, have you share some words of encouragement with her, too, because she's a phenomenal young woman. I'm going to bring her into the studio right now. Cassandra, is that you? Yeah. How are you Hi, doing? Cassandra. I'm good. Oh, all right. Cassandra is one of my amazing students, and um, I wanted to see if she has any questions for you. And, um, Cassandra, mm-hmm. if you don't have any questions, I want to have Hunter encourage you because – she just wants to let you know how beautiful you are and that you can be proud of your body and just the amazing young woman you are. Cassandra is 15 years old, by the way. Oh, amazing. Hi, Cassandra. How are you? I'm good. Good. Oh, do you have any questions that you want to ask Hunter about modeling or just being confident with who she is, following your dreams, anything? Yeah, like I want to be um, a cosplayer and – and um. Like modeling and stuff. So 
So how you do you know how to like get into it? I do. So I, I mean, I think the first thing that you, um, as far as modeling, I would honestly, there's so many amazing, amazing agencies. There's one in particular, um, that's really up and coming right now, um, named Healthy is the new skinny and they they run, they go by natural models. Um, and they do open casting calls. So what you go in and you let them know what you want to do and, um, they take photos of you and, um, it's, it's a fun experience. I think that anytime you're going into an agency, you just go in and you have fun and you bring your sweet personality and remember who you are and how beautiful you are and that you are not defined by your body. Never get discouraged because there was a lot of people who told me no. And I said, okay, thank you, moving on. And now those same people are coming back to me saying they want to work with me. Um, don't get discouraged by anything. Have fun. You're so young. Live your life and um, just remember how beautiful you are. You are perfect in your way and every way, shape and form. Um, and my goodness, I to be 15 again would be the most amazing thing ever. You have so much amazing life to live ahead of you. And um, I know Sade said that you are uh, you're quite the amazing young girl. And um, what an honor that I get to even speak to you. Yay. <laughs> I could tell that she's smiling from ear to ear right now. <laughs> oh, you are so sweet, Cassandra. So, Cassandra, what I'm going to try to work on with, because, you know, Hunter's super busy. She's actually in another state right now working on an amazing photo shoot and project. But I'm going to do my best to see if I can bring her in to one of our sessions this school year so you guys can spend time with her and be able to be mentored by her for an afternoon if she's available. I'm going to try to find Oh, I would schedule. love we'll do our that. Best. <laughs> I, will ma- I will make sure to make that happen. I promise. Okay. Awesome. And so we'll work on that in that way because, like I said, I feel like Wonderful. she's just such a powerful woman, and I want her to be able to encourage you, Cassandra, you know, because you can see that here she is, someone who understands what you feel. She knows what it feels like to be bullied. She knows what it feels like to be told no. Oh, yeah. She knows what it feels like to be picked on and all those things. But here she is today. Oh, yeah. She's traveling all over the world. She's living her dream. She's helping other people and encouraging people like me and you. And so we want you to know that you can believe in yourself too. Yep, absolutely. Amen to that. You nailed, you nailed it on the head with that one. <laughs> so do you have any other questions or comments that you want to um, share with Hunter? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if not, it's okay. I just wanted to give you another opportunity. Like I said, we're, I'm going to bring her into um, one of our sessions soon for either our girls group or our superstars in training group. But I want to thank you so much for calling in, Cassandra. I hope this made your night. Thank you, Cassandra. Yeah. I'm so excited I got to talk to you, honey. And just just remember everything we're saying, okay? I went through the same exact thing. Let me tell you, I was heavily bullied in high school and – it was not so fun, but I just stay strong and know that you're so, so, so beautiful and so wonderful and so loved by so many. I can tell Thank right you. now. All right, honey. Thank okay. you so much. Have a, okay. have a good rest of the night, Cassandra, okay? Thanks for calling okay, in. Okay, thank you. Bye. 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 All right, Hunter, as we finish up your interview, please share with everyone all your current projects that you're working on. Oh my goodness. Um, I, right now I am working on, <laughs> I'm currently in Lane, in uh, Columbus, Ohio, shooting for Lane Bryant. They just released um, online their capsule collection called Fast Lane. So you can check that out. Um, I'm kind of juggling a bunch of stuff right now. I'm um, in the works, possibly collaborating for a swim line and an athleisure line. Um, mm-hmm. So that to look out for. I'm not sure quite when we're going to launch. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, just working away, doing 
doing <laughs> photo shoots, doing, just trying to, to, to be, you know, a positive light in the world and, and share beautiful clothes. Yeah. And um, I'm mm-hmm. currently out in Melissa McCarthy's um, spring campaign. We just shot her. Um, I shot her launch, her um, mm-hmm. holiday in her spring campaigns and her spring stuff just launched and it's amazing. Uh, go check mm-hmm. that out as well. <clears throat> okay. And then also mm-hmm. where can people follow you and stay updated with your career? Just share with them all your links and your social media yeah, handles. I am Hunter McGrady on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. So just H U N T E R M C G R A D Y. Um, you can find me across the board um, with all of that. And, um, yeah, thank you so much for having me on. I had a blast, and I'm so excited we got to do this. Yes, me You're too. You're so wonderful. I'm, so thankful. I'm thankful unto you. I feel the same way about you. You are such a bright light. And it's like, yes, you, you are physically beautiful on the outside, but I feel like even more than that, your your spirit, your mm-hmm. mind, and your heart, and the way you treat others is phenomenal. And you Aww. are just you're radiant. You're absolutely radiant. And so I'm thankful to have had you on so tonight. Much. I look forward to us staying in contact and being able to connect and work together because we're very passionate about similar things. And um, and, I, yes. and I'm so thankful to God for having our paths crossed. Amen. Thank you so much, sister. And you, you seriously let me know because I will make time for those, um, any of those kids. Okay? Awesome. Thank you so much, Hunter. Enjoy right, the rest honey. of your night. Thanks, I'll let so. you get some rest and you too. I'll chat with you soon. Okay. Thanks, hon. You Bye. have a good one. Bye. All right, thank you to everyone who tuned in tonight. Thank you for downloading, subscribing, and sharing my radio show. As we wrap up tonight's episode of the Sade Champagne Show, thanks to Grindhard Radio for the opportunity to create my own radio show. Thanks to Travis Miller for creating and producing my theme song and Scott Swish for mixing the song. For mixing the song. Thanks to my special celebrity guest, Hunter McGrady. Thanks to the castmates, Lisa Lee Walt. Christina Renee, and Tanya Chisholm. And next week, our celebrity guest is ABC Family star and musical artist, Marshawn, and he'll be premiering his brand new song right after his interview. We also have a special guest interview with popular Q1047 radio personality, Miss Allenette. And we have a brand new charity spotlight segment where we'll be raising awareness for the Heartbeat Music Academy in San Diego. And our final new artist spotlight segment of the season where we'll feature conscious musical artist, performer, and activist, Jay Lynn. Get ready for another stellar episode next week. Our final song of the night is so fitting. It goes with everything we've been talking about tonight. It goes with Hunter McGrady's message and my message and everything we want to share on the show with you guys. And this is NDRE with Beautiful Flower. Thanks for listening to the Shade Champagne Show, and see you next Wednesday from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Pacific time right here on Grind Hard Radio. Where dreamers dream, where dreams come true, there's no limit to what we can do. Turning no's to yes, leaving doubt behind, releasing the stress. We were born to shine.